Oh, yes, can, please. Oh, yeah, can, can you see my screen? Yes, okay. yes. we can, yeah. Um, sorry about the disconnect. I don't know what happened. Um, so um, uh, today I'm going to talk about dot cut correspondence. And two main actors of today's story are the uh, simplicial category delta and its extensions called uh, cross simplicial groups. Delta is uh, simply the skeletal category of well-ordered sets and order preserving functions. So that means for every natural number, I'm going to have a finite set. Uh, in this case, it's going to have uh, order n plus one number of elements in the well-ordered set is going to be n plus one. So zero has one element. Um, and the order preserving maps. Now, the, it's a nice category It actually appears in lots of different places. And uh, you'll see the, uh, the reason in a few minutes. But uh, um, let me start with shortcomings and the reason why we need cross simplicial groups in a sense. The one big shortcoming of this category is the fact that every uh, object has the, the smallest possible automorphism group. If you take any object here, N, and if you look at its automorphism group, which is the self order preserving maps from uh, the set from zero to N to itself, you get only one. Uh, which means the automorphism group is the, as small as possible. Uh, so in, if you're interested in homotopy theory, specifically um, equivariant homotopy theory, you want you know, some sort of an extension. You need some good classes of groups to enrich the theory. Um, so for this one, you can extend delta by adding these new uh, uh, groups to, to the picture. So you can actually create a new category or new categories where the automorphism group is the group you want uh, uh, and together with the, uh, the structure maps of Delta. Uh, unfortunately, you can't do this with every group. There is only a finite list of groups that you can work with. And those are, for today's purposes, so you can actually pretty much choose everything you want. Uh, symmetric groups, uh, cyclic groups, dihedral groups, hyperoctahedral hyper groups, and uh, so there are also infinite families, but uh, the only one I'm going to mention today is going to be braid groups. The, the, uh, the first row, symmetric groups, cyclic groups, dihedral groups, and hyperoctal groups, or hyperoctahedral groups, are all finite. Uh, that is, for each n, the, the corresponding group is, is a finite group. The corresponding automorphism group is a finite group. But if you put the braid group on top of on each object, you get an infinite extension, so to speak. But uh, today I'm going to be working with delta. Toward the end, I'll explain where this uh, cross simplicial groups actually come into the picture. The um, So uh, the reference that I'm going to give you, uh, if, you if you're interested in these uh, cross simplicial group is Lode Abugazi. Abugazi was a, a PhD student of Lode. Uh, she's the first one who actually did work on this and uh, Lode and Fyodorovich. Fyodorovich. Uh, Abu Ghazi is the first one who actually did construct the whole classes of groups that uh, you can actually work with the uh, delta category. And uh, Lode and Fyodorovich did the uh, early work on homotopy theory and homology of these uh, types of uh, cross simplicial objects. All right. Uh, so far, so good. But um, um, one thing that is probably uh, that one thing that we learned from uh, early work done in group theory is that groups themselves are not that interesting. Their representations actually give more uh, information about the groups themselves. Uh, the same thing is true for uh, categories, actually. If you want to learn something about the category, you shouldn't look at the structure of the category that much, but you should really look into its representations. In this case, a representation so representations of uh, small cats or small categories are functors 
from this index category, in our case, delta, to some other category C. I'm going to use the notation um, C to the delta, or C to the delta op. This is more interesting for us. All right. So these are usually sometimes uh, denoted as SC, simplicial objects in C, or for this one. And this is the cosimplicial one. Uh, usually we write C co cos, cosimplicial categories uh, over C, simplicial, categories, simplicial objects over C. All right. So why is this important? Well, because we can do homotopy theory. So whenever we have, so um, um, we can do homotopy theory with representations, reps of delta. And the way it works is as follows. So let's say I have a representation x from delta op to c. And let's say I have a coefficient functor from C to set, then I can form what is called, uh, so we can take F X dot, this would be a functor from delta up to C. And for these, we have homotopy groups. We have what we call combinatorial, homotopy groups. I'll write this as pi n of x with coefficient in f. Now, the nice thing about these homotopy groups are as follows. Pi zero is a set. Pi one is a group. And pi n are abelian groups. For n greater or equal to two. Now, as anybody would attest, homotopy theory is hard, homology is easier. So instead of having homotopy, if you had homology, things would be a lot simpler. So and uh, the definition of the combinatorial homotopy groups are not easy to decipher. There is another version of it, this uh, homotopy theory where you take the uh, simplicial set or the uh, simplicial object and then you apply the coefficient functor, then you would get a simplicial set. And then you can apply what's called the geometric realization which gives you a topological space and then you calculate its homotopy groups which will give you the uh, topological homotopy groups of a simplicial set. Uh, but today's uh, purposes, let's uh, just look at the combinatorial version. That's uh, actually toward the end, I'll do something similar to what I just described in terms of the topological description. Uh, so one thing here is that the, um, so another difficulty or obstacle uh, calculating homo homotopy is difficult. So here's another thing then. If F, the coefficient functor, uh, went into the category of abelian groups, or if F was from C to some abelian category A, A is abelian, then uh, this thing, F of X dot, uh, has what's called uh, homology. All right. And the way it works is that since uh, this is a functor, X is a functor. Uh, X has these, uh, what we call the uh, face maps, structures, structure maps. These are face maps. And since uh, A is abelian, 
if you apply f of xn to f of delta i, f of xn minus one, we can add or subtract or take linear combinations. We can take linear combinations. of maps and we can define what's called the homology or the singular homology. So dn would be defined as summation minus one to the power i f of the face maps delta i. And these maps xn to xn minus one satisfy the property that dn uh, the n minus one would be zero. So this is called the singular complex, singular complex of a simplicial set. All right, you just look at the same object, but instead of looking at the simplicial set structure maps, you just look at the differential that you created out of the face maps. And uh, so if f of x is a simplicial set, I'll write this S f of x is a chain complex. All right, so which means I have homotopy groups on one side and I have homology groups on the other side. I'll write this way. This is the homology of X with coefficients in F. So the question is, how are these things are related? Now, the answer comes from the following fact. These are isomorphic. So pi n x dot f is isomorphic to h n x dot f. And the key observation that Dolph and Kahn did actually said that this isomorphism is not something that is isolated it actually comes from a specific equivalence between two categories. So here's the original dot cam theorem, dot cam. It says, if A is an abelian category, then the simplicial objects in A, so these are representations of delta in A, and differential graded objects in A, these categories are equivalent via two functors. This is the uh, Moore functor, and there is this other functor, which I, um, I'll write this as C, or I actually don't have a name for that, and uh, are equivalent. Okay. The way I use this in my day-to-day -day research is the, is the following way. The differential graded objects are nice and you can work with them. They are linear, so you, you know, homology is easy to calculate in most cases because um, what you do is essentially linear algebra. So the right side, differential graded side is nice. Uh, the other side is not because the simplicial objects, uh, the representations of a simplicial category I mean, the, cat the representation category is linear, but the simplicial category itself is not linear. Uh, on the other hand, differential graded objects have the following drawback. It's very difficult to do monoidal product in a differential graded setting. It's not easy, uh, but the product on the simplicial side is very easy. Uh, so there is always this trade-off. Certain things are easy on one side, certain things are not easy on the other side. And uh, actually, this equivalence is monoidal, by the way. 
monoidal. I shouldn't say strictly monoidal. It's kind of there is a lax, laxness to it, laxness to it, um, and the monoidal equivalence is implemented by eilenberg zilber theorem. eilenberg zilber theorem and Alexander Whitney map. Okay. Uh, a good reference for this one is if you want this to be in the most uh, modern and relevant setting is the modal categorical uh, version of this. This is Schweden, Shipley, Schweden and Shipley. And the title of the paper is Monoidal Equivalences of Model Caps. Monoidal Equivalences of um, Model Categories. Uh, since we are talking about model cats, one should also mention the following fact. Uh, the equivalence above, this equivalence that I wrote here, is an ordinary equivalence of two categories. So this is really as, as I would say, classical as it gets. But the proper context of it is uh, uh, the Quillen model categories and model theory. Uh, the category of simplicial objects in a, uh, the representations of the simplicial category has its own model structure. Differential graded objects on a category has its own uh, model structure. Essentially, uh, model structure means that you're doing homotopy theory or homology, depending on if the, uh, the category is uh, abelian or linear. And the equivalence you see here is an equivalence of Quillen modal categories. That's the proper context of it. But uh, I want to, uh, instead of uh, uh, making this more abstract, I'm going to push this to more concrete. Uh, in uh, advertising, there is a slogan, sex always sells. In math, it's usually complication always sells. I'm going to make this less complicated. So I'm, going, I'm not going to try to push this to the Quillen model category setting, I'm going to actually going to try to push this on the representation theory level. I'm going to write everything in terms of classical algebras, uh, albeit infinite dimensional, but uh, the equivalences would be equivalences of model, uh, actually um, module categories. Not, I'm not going to do any sort of you know, homotopy theory or homology theory, but uh, the proper setting is that. And uh, it's a good, uh, uh, what do you call that, a PhD problem for a new uh, PhD student. So this is the reason why uh, Haidar is actually going to, uh, is he's not going to stay with the, uh, uh, the humanly level of uh, modules over a small cap, but he's going to actually do this in the modal categorical setting. Um, so, but today, uh, we are going to stick with um, representation theory. Okay. So I'm going to start with a very trivial observation. Uh, the observation is this. If you're going to look at group homomorphisms from G to endomorphisms or probably automorphisms, I shouldn't say. So we are looking at linear representations of a group in a vector space V. So V is a vector space. Uh, this is the same as uh, ring homomorphisms or algebra homomorphisms from the group ring of G to uh, endomorphisms or matrices in V. All right. So instead of working on the group level, you can work with the ring level. Rings are easier. More structure means you have more leeway to do other stuff. Uh, so instead of doing group theory, you can do ring theory, but specifically working with the group ring. The same thing actually happens with the small categories as well. So if you're, we are going to look at 
uh, functors, let me write this way, if you are going to look at functors from delta into some abelian category, or in this case, let's say A is a K-linear uh, category, K-linear meaning that fix yourself a ground ring or a ground field, and your category, uh, morphisms of your category are just K-linear maps, uh, even though the objects you know, could be anything you want. Uh, if you're looking at functors of this type, this is the same thing as functors of k-linear categories. So this is functors of ordinary categories, or you can look at k-linear categories, but then in that case, you do this. Now, this thing, you can think of this is, uh, uh, I'll write this as group ring of delta. I will create an honest to God ring or honest to God algebra. The way I would do it is take delta, but don't think of it as a category, just take the morphisms in delta, or this could be any other category as well, just delta being the primary object of uh, today's story. So take uh, all morphisms in delta and then just take all, all possible, uh, I mean, just look at the vector space generated by the morphisms of delta. And then you define a composition by saying that, okay, if you have a k-linear composition or k-linear uh, um, uh, collection of morphisms, you multiply with another k-linear collection. And then if two morphisms are composable, you compose. If they're not composable, the product would be zero. All right. So this becomes a ring or k-algebra. K-delta becomes uh, a, an algebra. All right, so I'm interested in representations of this algebra. Right. Um, so here is a warning. I'm going to use, I'll use delta for both delta itself and for k delta. I don't want to write k delta. Uh, if k is already fixed, right? So depending on the context, if I'm talking about uh, a k-linear context, think of delta as the algebra of delta, or if you're talking about categorical setting, think of it as the category itself, right? Now, um, delta has a very nice subring or very nice subalgebra generated by all of these linear combinations that I told you about. Minus one to the power i, delta i. So this is the nth level. So zero to 10. Call this the n. Okay. Call the subalgebra omega. So omega lies inside delta as a subalgebra. Now, when you have this, uh, so you have this omega to delta injection. Uh, when we have this, then we have three other functors, three functors. These are restriction functors. Restriction delta to omega which goes from delta mod the modules over delta or uh, representations, linear representations of delta to uh, mod here. By the way, this thing is differential graded objects, differential graded A. So if we're talking about modules in A or representations in A, so this would be DGA. And of course, this would be the simplicial objects or co-simplicial objects, depending on whether you're, you're writing uh, left modules or right modules. So you have these uh, three functors, so your restriction functor, since you have a large algebra and if you have a smaller subalgebra, you can think of a module over the large algebra 
as a module over the smaller algebra by restricting the uh, structure map. So you just, you know, if you have a delta action, then you also have an omega action because omega lies inside delta as a subalgebra. You have the induction functors. I have two of those. This goes from uh, omega modules to delta modules by simply sending, let's say, x to x tensor omega with delta, All right? If you have a larger algebra, and if you have a module over a smaller algebra, you take the tensor product of the large algebra over the smaller subalgebra by the module itself, and it becomes, if x is a right omega module, now it becomes, the tensor product becomes a right delta module. There is also a co-induction functor. Um, from delta mod to, so omega mod to delta mod by sending x to its home, but this way. Now delta, is, since it's an algebra, is a two-sided model, so it's a bimodule over itself. Since it's a bimodule over itself, it's also a bimodule over omega or a left module or right module, depending on what you have. And if you want to create, let's say, a left or let's say right, let's say you want to create a right X module, a right delta module over a right omega module, you're going to take the, uh, you're going to think of delta as an omega module over the right. And when you take the home like that, it becomes a, a right module. All right. So I have these three functors and uh, it doesn't have to be, by the way, uh, these functors uh, don't depend on this map being an injection. If you have any algebra map from an algebra to another algebra, you still can define these three functors, induction, restriction, and co-induction. As long as you have a map, you define the same way. Uh, of course, the trick is you're actually doing the same thing, but you're doing, you're essentially gluing uh, these representations or these uh, products and homes over the image of the, uh, the, uh, the algebra. Um, so. If, if you have any other map, if we have a regular algebra morphism S to R, uh, we, all, we again have uh, these three functors. Okay. Any questions so far? So first theorem of today. There is an epimorphism of the form delta plus two omega, which splits the injection. Now, delta plus is the subcat or subalgebra of epimorphisms in delta. Essentially, I'm looking at only the face maps. Uh, if you're familiar with the simplicial technology, I don't care about the degeneracies. Uh, I just need the, the uh, face maps. There's actually a historical uh, point that I'd like to make here. This is kind of a weird, and I don't, I don't know the explanation if anybody knows uh, from you know, Grapevine uh, if, why this was the case. Uh, originally, the simplicial sets or simplicial gadgets were defined only using the face maps, no degeneracies whatsoever. And the, uh, the object that is defined, and this is back going back to Eilenberg McLean, uh, the simplicial sets were defined only using the face maps. 
And later on in the 60s and maybe early, late 50s, early 60s, the notion of simplicial set became like synonymous with face maps plus degeneracies. And the uh, object that has only the face maps are now called uh, pre-simplicial. Uh, so, um, so, Aren't they also called semi-simplicial? Semi-simplicial, pre-simplicial. So the, but the, you have to quantify it, say that it is not simplicial. It is less than simplicial. Uh, but uh, it's kind of like an interesting historical uh, accident as to the terminology has changed from 50s to uh, 60s to 70s. All right. Uh, by the way, um, the standard, uh, standard reference for homotopy theory for simplicial sets uh, is May's book on, well, I mean, I like May's book, but it's kind of outdated now, uh, Simplicial Objects and Algebraic Topology. Uh, but the more modern version would be, um, um, let me see, I'm drawing a blank, uh, Jardin Goers. This is uh, Simplicial Homotopy theory. Uh, so if you want to learn uh, simplicial technology and together with homotopy theory, I would definitely recommend uh, Gers and Jardine's book on simplicial homotopy theory. Okay. Now, so um, this wasn't an easy proof. There is an epimorphism and the epimorphism is interestingly, very deliciously defined in combinatorial terms. You can actually do a lot of interesting combinatorics using Delta. And the proof relies on the following fact. It relies on the fact that uh, there are new elements or they're kind of like a new basis. D and J, I from J to N uh, minus one to the power I delta I uh, generates Delta as an algebra, or delta plus as an algebra. This is kind of a new base. The partial, the uh, face maps generate uh, delta plus by definition, uh, but it has a different basis. And the element that I wrote, omega, is generated by uh, delta n zero. And the map, so delta plus to omega sends uh, dn zero to dn, which is the same element. It's just, I have a diff different index and dn i to zero or i greater than zero. All right. And of course it splits. There's an injection from omega to delta plus and then by sending dn to dn zero, and this is this epimorphism split. Well, split on the uh, image side. As I said, this uh, the proof of this is not easy. It's purely combinatorics, uh, but it uh, is actually quite uh, deliciously uh, uh, computational. Uh, so we spend a lot of time actually proving this. Uh, the next part is more important. Here. But before going into the theorem, I have to explain something. In the equivalence in the Dalton equivalence, there is a map called N or functor called uh, N. This is the uh, we have what's called the Moore functor. And from the uh, simplicial objects to differential graded objects. And the first time I saw this Moore functor, I you know, spent a lot of time trying to understand why. Why this, this, I know that it works. Mechanically, I'm going to give you the definition, you'll understand why it works but I couldn't put it in a conceptual uh, framework because this is just out of the blue. And it goes like this. Nx n is going to be, so I need to create from a given simplicial uh, abelian group or a simplicial module, 
I need to create a differential graded module. And the way you do it, you take the intersections of the kernels of the face maps, except for the last one. All right. Last one accepted. Uh, last one is not included. Now, if you do it this way, which means all face maps act by zero except the last face map, and then the last face map, then delta n becomes a derivative or becomes a differential because delta n delta n minus one equals delta n delta n and becomes zero. Which means an x together with the last face maps is a differential graded object. As I said, I mean, mechanically, we can understand what this is. It's you just take the uh, kernels um, and the last phase that becomes a differential, then it just works fine. There is actually even a nice geometric picture to it. If you, for example, take, uh, well, it's not this version, but it's kind of an interesting version. If you take a simplicial group, uh, sim not the sim any simplicial group, but if you look at the braid groups as a simplicial group and this intersection, is what's called the uh, Brunian links. That is, if you delete any of the braids, then it becomes a non-braid. Uh, so this actually has a geometric, interesting geometric interpretation. Uh, but as I said, when I looked at it the first time, I said, you know, what the hell? Where does this, why does this work? And where did it come from? But now we, with Haidar and I, we actually developed a conceptual framework as to why this works. So here's the theory. The more function n is the co-induction function co-induction function, but not with the inclusion, it's with the surjection. So I always get confused. Yeah, associated with the uh, epimorphism delta plus to omega. And the other functor, the other leg of the dot con equivalence is the induction functor, interestingly, with the uh, associated with the inclusion is the induction functor associated with the inclusion delta plus. Now, interestingly, we're, uh, this, is, this is one of the things that I like. Uh, I, I can cheat. The, the heavy lifting of the proof that dot con is an equivalence can be has to be done the way it's always been done. I'm not going to change that. What we are doing with Haidar is rewriting the conceptual framework of uh, dot con. Now, all dot con like results that are few. Uh, dot con, the original one, and there is also the version which uh, works with simplicial. Uh, sorry. Uh, cyclic objects and what we call duplicial objects. I'll actually explain that in a minute. Um, they can all be written in the language of induction, co-induction and restriction functors. So, and all of them are equivalences of that type, all right? So even the other one theorem, there is, an equivalence of categories, and it goes like this, the uh, delta C mod, this is the cyclic objects, and I'll write this way, duplicial 
modules uh, defined by Doyer Khan. Doyer and Khan. Uh, this too can be explained by a pair of uh, induction, co-induction, and restriction functors. Okay. Uh, duplicial objects is essentially uh, differential graded objects together with an extra thing. Um, but I mean, the, the setup is the same. A delta C is going to be a ring or an algebra duplicial uh, thing actually becomes a subalgebra in there. And then you have, again, induction, co-induction, or restriction functors. And if you look at, and since now you can write the whole setup in terms of these in induction and restriction functors, you don't change the original proof. You say that, look, these induction and restriction functors implement an equivalence and uh, now you have a, a conceptual framework. You know where this uh, functor, the Moore functor comes from, where uh, you know where these doyer Khan equivalence comes from, et cetera. So uh, what we are doing with Haidar is, is giving a nice conceptual picture as to how these equivalences actually work. There are tons of different versions of uh, these doyer Khan type results. For example, instead of using abelian categories, you can work with infinity spectra, and then write everything in terms of you know nice homotopical uh, uh, results. So you can lift them to uh, Quillen model category setting, or you can lift it to some other semi-abelian categories. For example, there is a version instead of working with abelian categories, you can actually prove the same result with a semi-abelian category setting, etc. But all of them will have the same shape. There is an induction or co-induction functor. There is a restriction functor, and these two pairs or functors implement an equivalence between two categories. So let's go back to the original setting. So where do, do you, where do cross simplicial car objects come into picture? Well, now we know that everything is an induction and restriction. And we have actually both an inclusion. So delta embeds into delta G, well, G being any of these uh, cross simplicial ones. And there is also a surjection from delta G to delta. By the way, this is the same thing as sending every group element to the unit element on the other side. This is the standard augmentation map, but written in the categorical of the setting. Um, so we have six functors, uh, four induction and co-induction, depending on whether you're using inclusion or epimorphism, the augmentation map and two restriction functors, whether you're using the inclusion or the uh, epimorphism or the augmentation map. And it, uh, some of these implement an equivalence uh, of delta G mod to delta mod. Provided there are restrictions, this doesn't work all the time. Provided that one, uh, GNs are all finite. And two, uh, the characteristic of the base field or base ring or base whatever is zero. And there is a very good reason why, because KG, if you look at the groups themselves, forget the delta part. If you look at the collection of the groups, KG is semi-simple. If these two things happen. In other words, if these two things happen, that is, if the, all these uh, exotic extensions 
provide automorphisms which are all finite. And if the characteristic is zero, then the cohomology, the homology of these added groups don't come into picture because KG is semi-simple. It only has uh, homology at degree zero and then you're done. This is essentially the reason why the people who are working with cyclic homology prefer uh, characteristic zero, or most of the time, actually, they work with complex numbers because they are interested in C-cell algebras and specifically K-theory of C-cell algebras, and they use cyclic homology to detect uh, K-theoretical classes. But uh, there is a technical reason as well. Uh, you don't want the cohomology or homology of the cyclic groups coming into the picture and muddying the water, so to speak. And uh, the same thing also happens here. Now, we know that induction and restrictions is the proper framework. Now we can actually find these equivalences, delta G mode to delta mode, and uh, find equivalences, those Kant type equivalences for cross simplicial groups. Historically speaking, this is uh, uh, it kind of like a cheat because people, if you, I mean, if you're familiar with the literature, you see the following fact. When, he, when, we, when people try to write these dot Kant type equivalences for exotic objects like uh, cross simplicial groups, they try to create these equivalence functors from scratch. Since the Moore functor or the doyer Kahn equivalence functors are defined in an ad hoc fashion, they don't give you why this works. They just say, well, we defined it and it works. Uh, you, so if you're going to write an equivalence for cross simplicial groups, you have to create two things. One, you have to create the range functor. That is, I know I'm going to work with the cross simplicial groups or representations of cross simplicial groups on one side, but you don't know what's on the other side. I mean, it has to be some sort of an extension or some sort of an enrichment of the category of differential graded objects. So first of all, you have to create the other side. And then once you create the other side, you also have to create these uh, functors going in the opposite direction. But when you write it as uh, induction and restrictions, you kind of realize that, well, you don't have to do that. What you have to do is kind of find an equivalence between simplicial category or representations of the simplicial category and the representation of the cross simplicial category. And then you extend the dot count in that way. That way you kind of avoid constructing the other side. Doyer Kahn, for example, created uh, duplicial objects and then uh, very difficult and to the force proof, uh, proving that the duplicial objects and category of cyclic uh, uh, sets or cyclic modules uh, are equivalent, but it's a difficult proof. I mean, you really don't know why the other side is duplicial objects. And I mean, once you look at the mechanics of the proof, you understand it, but uh, conceptually speaking, it's not easy to understand. But uh, the way we did with Haidar is it uh, puts everything in a very nice, clean uh, theoretical framework. You need induction and restriction functors. You need these uh, categorical rings and subrings, certain subrings, and uh, these induction and restriction functors give you the equivalences. So the extension of the dot con would look something like this. I have the original dot con induction and restriction. And I have cross simplicial groups, induction and restriction. And therefore I will have extended dot com with induction and restriction. And uh, this way, uh, I think it's much cleaner. And it's also, you don't have to appeal to any, you know, high for limited uh, mother model category stuff. And everything works, you know, on the plain uh, representation theory level. But as I said, Haidar definitely uh, is going to extend this work to Quillen setting as well in the future. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments? Hello. Hocam sesimi alabiliyor musunuz? Alıyorum. Evet. Ya ben e, birkaç sorum var ama e, Buyurun. Şimdi hocam e, bu Raşit Abogazi e, bildiğim kadarıyla e, Louis Lodey'in öğrencisiydi. Evet. Ürdünlü olması lazım. Ya. Bu cross e, simplicial grupları e, tanımlamışlardı. Bir Fransızca ya. bir makaleleri vardı. Bir tane Aynen. gördüm. Ya. Onun şeyin evet. e, 
Raşid'in şey e, PhD'sinden gelen makale. Evet. Ya ama daha sonra bu Raşid e, şeyi bıraktı sanırım bu konuda çalışmayı. Ya matematiği evet. bıraktı. Matematiği bıraktı. Bu cross simplicial grupların hocam, e, cross simplicial algebra veya herhangi bir e, Lee, Lee algebra gibi tanımlamaları yapılabilir mi? İlk sorun bu. Okay. Ee, şeyin yani cross simplicial grupların e, teorisi aslında ilginç. E, şeye bakarsan, e, Loday ve Fiedorov için yazdığı ikinci bir paper var. Bu cross simplicial grupların e, homolojisi nasıl hesaplanıyor diye. Orada evet. bir extension'ı var. E, Lice bir e, kısmı biraz zor olabilir çünkü e, şey değiller bunlar. Nasıl diyeyim sana? E, bunların geometrik realizasyonları e, topolojik olarak e, basit. Mesela evet. şeyin delta e, siklik kategorinin geometrik realizasyonu circle. Dolayısıyla yani sen onu bir grupla ya da Lie grupla eşleştireceksen e, evet. şeyle e, abilien Lie group of rank 1 ile eşleştirebilirsin. Evet. E, delta S'in mesela geometrik realizasyonu e, trivial. Dolayısıyla onun Lie grubu trivial. Hyperoctal'ın ki işte e, büyük olasılıkla infinite dimensional projective space falan gibi bir şey. Yani o yüzden onların Lie grup e, türü definitionları yok. E, anladım hocam. Yeah. E, bir de hocam şimdi e, Dolkan teoreminde biliyorsunuz Abelian simplicial yeah. Abelian gruplarda yeah. e, differential grades algebralara Moore funktör la yeah. bu denkliği kuruyorlar. Yeah. Nanabelyan olduğu zaman e, burada e, differential grade algebra yerine cross differential grade algebra diye bir yapı var biliyorsunuz. Andy Tongs ve Baus tanımlamıştı bunu da. Yeah. Bunların arasında bir e, algebraik e, denklik kurulan bir yayın var, var mı hocam? Var. var. Semi abelian kategorilerle yapılan bir tane versiyonu var. Semi abelianlarla. Bir Pardon. tanesi o, bir tanesi de i, i, i infinity setting'i taşıyorlar. Yani sen şey diyorsun, diyorsun ki abelian kategoriyle çalışmak istemiyorum. Evet. I, i infinity spektralarla çalışacağım. Ee, evet. Onun da bir extension'ı var. Ee, galiba şeyin e, i infinity versiyonu hangisini unuttum. Ee, ama şeye bakarsan, e, sen söyle ya MathSignet'e ya ZBMath'e bakarsan bulabilirsin onu. Son sorum evet. hocam. Spektral, spektral Doltukan e, yani aslında dediğiniz e, Spektral Doltukan'a giriyor. O da aslında ya. Abelian versiyon sayıdır yine. Ama onun homotopi yani, versiyonu yani. Otentik olarak non-Abelian değil yani. Ha, o, o, evet. yok, ama, yok doğru ama o homotopik versiyonu oluyor. O da bir çeşit evet, non, tamam. non-Abelian evet. ama homotopik yani relaxation evet. onu. Evet. Semi-Abelian var onun için. Semi Abelian extension'ı da var. O biraz daha non, non Abelian versiyonuna gider. Hocam özür dilerim. Son sorum var bir de. Hı hı. Şimdi bu Dubuschel dediğiniz şey e, double simplicial mı? Yoksa hani olayı <gülüyor> anlamadım ama. E, şeye girmedim. Teknik detayına girmedim. Onu şöyle düşünüyorsun. E, Dubuschel'lar simplicial'lara benziyorlar. Ama evet. simplicial'ların yanında bir tane de ekstra degeneracy'leri var. Ha, ekstra dejenerarla bu tamam. Şimdi burada e, e, simplicial abelyandan more complex de differential grade algebraya geldik. Ya. Yeah. Peki e, e, double simplicial algebra biliyorsunuz işte delta'dan delta op'tan herhangi bir kategoriye gelen fonksiyonla simplicial'ı tanımlayabiliyoruz. Tamam. Delta çarpı delta op. Yani ya yeah, anladım e, by yani by simplicial double, by simplicial. double, double, double şey by complex yapıyorsun onlar. Okay. By complex yapıp buradan e, Dolkan teoreminin yüksek boyutlu versiyonları yani double e, differential great algebra bir yapı var mıdır karşılaştınız mı? Yok onu tabii doğrudan yapabilirsin. O yani şeyin Dolkan'ın içinde zaten. Yani şey diye düşün onu. Bir taraftan bir tarafa yazıyorsun, diğer taraftan diğer tarafa. Şeyi düşünüyorsun aslında, senin düşünmeye çalıştığın şey şu. N versiyonlu yapmaya... Ba- hani... Onu şöyle yaptılar ben sana. N versiyonu basit. Eğer şey her tarafını simplicial tutarsan, N simplicial'dan Hı. N differential'a var. O zaten klasik doltkanla çıkarabilirsin onu. Otomatik. Evet. Evet. Ee, ama cos simplicial'dan yapmak istersen o biraz daha zor. Ya cos simplicial biraz daha ya, şey, faydalı olmuyor, yarışlı olmuyor işin gerçeği hocam da. Yok, cos simplicial'ın da önemli olduğu yerler var. Ama onun bir versiyonu da var. O da e, Cortinias'ın e, birkaç öğrencisiyle yazdığı bir paper var ama onlar şeyde yaptılar. <gülüyor> e, 
Kogrupoid mi ya Kogrupoid ya Komonoid kategorisi üzerine yaptılar. Ee, onunla da ilgili bir paper var. Yine şeyden bakarsan bulursun. Cortinias'ın Doltkan Type diye geçiyor galiba. Ee, bir tane paper var. Orada anlatıyor onları. Ama orada Cosimplicial. Şimdi eğer Cosimplicial versiyonu varsa ki o paper'dan emin değilim. Dediğim gibi ben hani ayrıntılarını bilmiyorum o paper. Hı-hı. Ama onlar eğer Cosimplicial versiyonunu yapma, yapabilmişlerse o zaman senin dediğin şey o ikisini birleşir. Yani Doltkan'la o ikisinin birleşiminden gelir. Sen çünkü bay yapmaya çalışıyorsun. Delta, delta, op diye yapmaya çalışıyorsun. Karşı taraf o zaman bay differential oluyor. Aynen öyle. Hocam çok teşekkür ederim. Parasiklik kategoriden bakıyor muyuz hiç? Yapabilirsin. Parasiklik de şeyin versiyonlarından bir tanesi. Cross implicial'ların versiyonlarından bir tanesi. Ama orada şöyle bir problem var. Şimdi bu ekranı görüyorsun değil mi burada? Delta G'de delta Z olacak o. Yani parasiklik kategori olacak. Aha, aha, aha, aha. Ama o yukarıdaki delta modla denk değil. Dolayısıyla doltkan yok. Çünkü Z'in evet. homolojisi var. Evet, evet. Dolayısıyla doltkan elde edemezsin orada. Ya yani hiçbir zaman elde edemezsin. Yani bir tür correction term gibi bir şey var. Yani bir tane şeyin var, obstruction var. O obstruction class zero ise okey, fine. Ama e, o bir tane de, Z'in homolojisinden bir tane parça geliyor orada. Evet. Uh, any more questions or comments? Veya sorusu olan? Yeah, bu arada ben sorry, I, when the questions came in Turkish, I answered in Turkish. Those who are in the audience who doesn't uh, speak Turkish, I apologize. Maybe in future we can put subtitle to your uh, <laughs> uh, to the uh, you know communication. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, if there is no more questions or comments, let's thank Atabey once more. Yeah. Thank you very very much for the invitation. I really enjoyed talking. Oh, Atabe, we thank you very much, uh, and I hope we see each other face to face. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, see you all later. Uh, we have uh, election period next week, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we will see what will happen. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. See you all later. Thank you again. Thank you again. Yeah. Bye.